being in the world. The world is the only place where we can be. Being requires a place and a time. And our place and time is here, now, in the world. Ontology, or the Buddha's teaching, is not mystical. It's not a matter of the imagination or visualization. It's an experience right here, right now. It's not really a religion or even a philosophy. But it's a way of experiencing life from a different point of view that leads to increased abilities, increased skillfulness, and increased happiness. This video series presents an extended ontological analysis of a subject that concerns and involves us all, being in the world. Each section of the analysis will be accompanied by a detailed study guide, giving directions for further observation and study. We will analyze the ontic qualities of being in the world according to the ontological criteria and phenomenological methods given in the previous series, Becoming Genius. Needless to say, a working knowledge and practical familiarity with the methods presented in our previous series will be necessary to follow the discussion in being in the world. In other words, if you haven't watched our previous series, the Foundation series and Becoming Genius, you won't get much out of this discussion. You need that background to understand what we're talking about and especially the language that we're using. Because we're using the language of ontology. Most of us are overwhelmed by the world in which we live. We find ourselves thrust, unasked, naked, into a context we do not understand, surrounded by people, societies, conditions, and situations that we do not create or choose. Nevertheless, we must act to survive in a competitive environment that is all too often opaque and baffling and we will be held accountable for our actions. In other words, it's the catch-22 of material existence. Here we are, born into a world that is beyond us. Yet, we have to choose, and we find ourselves in so many situations that we don't agree with, we don't like, and we maybe don't even understand. Yet, we have to choose and act on our choices and we will be held accountable. We will be held responsible. We find ourselves vacillating between mute acceptance and blind rebellion. Just when we think we understand the game, someone changes the rules. Stricken by uncertainty, we chase admiration, love, and sense enjoyment. Sometimes we succeed, but far more often it inexplicably disappears or we find ourselves betrayed. Now, isn't this the story of everybody's life? Certainly the story of mine and of everyone I know. But there's something beyond this. There's something higher than this. And you can find it within yourself if you know where to look. That's what this series is about. A way of looking at life that allows you to make it meaningful just the way it is, without changing anything except your point of view. What is wrong? Why do we suffer? Is there an exit, a relief, a cure? What is wrong is that we are caught in a trap of our own manufacture, like a caterpillar in a pupa. Unfortunately, we do not recall how we wove ourselves into this confining karmic matrix. If we do not learn the structure of the trap, we cannot release ourselves and we die. If we can understand how we are caught, we can unravel the threads and break free a butterfly. This is a little metaphor, a little poem. <laughs> but really, it's a serious situation, and it's a difficult problem. We got ourselves into this mess, and only we can get ourselves out. Nobody can do it for you. 
There is no savior, there is no Messiah, there is no transcendent God that's gonna come down and save you. I'm sorry. That idea may give you some hope, it may give you some relief, but that relief is going to be betrayed when you find out the truth. We're here on our own and we have to get out on our own, but we can take advice. That's really the way it is. It may be difficult for you to accept this truth. You may be used to casting blame on others or making them responsible for your condition. You may want someone or something else to save you. You may seek refuge in faith, anger, or hope, but that will not help you to solve your problem, the problem that we all share, being in the world. The meaning of our experience is set by the context. And for most of us, the world is the context, but the world is not in our control. That means the meaning of our life is out of our control. What we are and how we see ourselves is being set by something more powerful than ourselves. And we can't find it. We don't know what it is. This is the existential human dilemma. We feel like innocent animals surrounded by vicious predators. Our only chance to escape is to utilize our intelligence to outthink and outstrategize them. Fortunately, a solution to the problem already exists. But at first, we may be reluctant to accept it. Maybe we think we will find a shortcut or an easier path. In all this time, in all these lives, we have been unable to find the way out on our own. Now, isn't it time we started looking around for somebody who has already figured this out? Isn't it time that we started to take some advice from some people who are more intelligent than ourselves? I think so. That's what I've done, and it enabled me to solve my problem. Now I'm sharing this solution with you. About 2,600 years ago, an extraordinary human being appeared, found the solution, and taught it freely to others. The Buddha. The Buddha is not a savior or a messiah. His teaching is not mystical or esoteric, but an understanding of ordinary everyday life in an extraordinary way, from a unique point of view. The Buddha's teaching doesn't change anything. It doesn't require another world, a heaven, where things are somehow different. No, the Buddha's teaching works right here, right now, in the world, the way it is, simply by changing our point of view. We continue the Buddha's tradition today, adapting it to contemporary style and language. We have not changed his message, only its form. This series is designed to begin to communicate the Buddha's message of freedom to you. The Buddha's teaching is very high, but we can begin from where we are. So we start from being in the world. People in the Buddha's time were more advanced in terms of consciousness and self-realization. The society was already informed by the Vedas. And the Vedas, although they don't contain ultimate truth, they contain a great deal of useful knowledge. I studied the Vedas for 40 years before I came to the Buddha's teaching. So, I am almost like a person of the Buddha's time, uh, more than a person of contemporary times, because I reject contemporary society. It's not built on anything substantial. It's simply about somebody else making a profit, somebody with more money and power than us. And that's what we've been conditioned by. We have to throw off that conditioning and come to the platform where the Buddha is speaking to before we can fully understand his message. That's what our video series are all about. We're trying to give you the information you need to elevate yourself to the point where you can hear the Buddha's message as it is, without any interference, without any translation or change or alteration in that message. So what we are doing is giving you a gradient path step by step that leads 
from where you find yourself, where you happen to be today, to the beginning of the Buddha's teaching, which is already quite high. Ontology, the science of being, reveals deep insights about the nature of human life and experience. An ontological analysis of the human condition, our way of being, shows that our everyday social relations give us a particular kind of preoccupation with the world. Our care for the world and the people and other beings in it involves us in a network of conditions and actions we do not choose, leading us away from our authentic self. In other words, because we care about the world, we identify with the purposes and moods and the rules made by others. And because of this, we deviate from our actual purpose and being. When we're born, we know why we came here, and we know what we want to do here, but we forget because of being overwhelmed by the conditions and the purposes of others. But this situation, if viewed in a certain way, also permits us to investigate our human condition firsthand. Wise men, down through the ages, have taught that a properly performed phenomenological inquiry into human beingness can bring us to a unified ontological model of human existence in which we at last find ourselves at home with ourselves. This realization of authentic beingness is the actual goal of human life, toward which we are relentlessly driven by the anxiety arising from falling from our real self into the world. So in other words, our original condition, our actual nature as a being, is still there. Only we have fallen away from it into the world because we went into agreement with other people's purposes. Now, you may say, well, I had to do that to survive. And yeah, there's something to that. But you're not a baby anymore. Now you're an adult. You can make your own decisions. And you can decide what your purpose is. You don't have to listen to anybody else. You can find this out for yourself by ontological investigation. That's what this is all about, getting you to look each part in this series has two videos, a reading and a study guide. Please view each reading first, then go through the study guide, performing all the assignments. Then go back and review the reading and note how its meaning has changed for you. So we're going to take a reading from an essay that I wrote called Being in the World after Heidegger. Heidegger was one of the greatest philosophers and ontologists of the 20th century. He's one of the founders of existentialism. Pretty much everybody in the world follows existentialism, whether they realize it or not. So we're going to begin from that platform, which is pretty much where everybody is at. And we're going to analyze it in terms of ontology. That's the difference. If you follow these instructions, including reviewing the videos in the previous series, Foundations and Becoming Genius, you will experience tremendous relief. You will finally understand that life is a play, the world is a stage, and that you have the right to write your part as you see fit. But we went through this process ourselves. When I was 64 years of age, my whole life fell apart. I discovered that the spiritual path to which I had dedicated my whole life was a fabrication. That it had, it was built on something true, but then it had gone off into a complete speculative uh, nonsense, basically. It wasn't leading anywhere. It certainly wasn't leading outside of human life. It wasn't going any place higher, uh, except maybe to a more advantageous material condition. So when this hit me, I had, had to step back and take a good look at my life and see where I went wrong. Now, 
In one sense, it was crushing. It was a, a crucible. I felt like I was on fire. But on the other hand, it was a tremendous opportunity to right the wrongs that I had made, to change the bad decisions that I had made to something better. And when I found the teaching of the Buddha, within a month of beginning the actual practices that Buddha recommended, my suffering was gone. It was gone. The fire was out. And now I feel like I have benefited so much, my whole life has changed for the better. I want to share this with others and give them the same opportunity. So that's what this is all about. Now, what makes us so special that we're able to unravel and reveal the secrets of life so clearly? It's simple. We got the message. We did the work. We didn't complain and we didn't give up. It was so many chances for me to just give up and take refuge of intoxication or whatever. But I didn't do it. I kept my nose to the grindstone until I reached results. Results are what this is all about. It's not simply a pretty idea. It's not just a nice philosophy or a beautiful religion. Well, it could be all of those things too. But it's more than that. It's a practical way to solve the problems of life. And I think this is what we've all been looking for. A way to stop the pain. Now, you have the chance to benefit from our experience. But we can't do the work for you. Please do yourself a big favor. Use these methods exactly as taught and recommended and get their full result. Now it's your turn. Click on this link to go to the first video. And good luck.